Good morning, everyone. It's Rick. It's June 3rd, 2017. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at my email address, rick0327 at me.com. Okay, what you're looking at here is uh, an administrative offset. And this is what they use to issue income withholding orders. Uh, this is what they use to, to seize your income taxes, money from lawsuits, any, any uh, what they call uh, non-tax debts. <clears throat> well, is to repay non-tax debts, but there's uh, any unprotected money. Okay, so, uh, and it arose from this executive order uh, by uh, the Clinton administration. And you see how they always disguise things, supporting families, collecting delinquent child support obligations. But, you know, we know that that they're not collecting for child support. They're collecting to recoup uh, welfare expenditures. That's all they're doing. So they're, they're, it's under the guise of helping children, okay, as we're looking at this case right here. The 11th Circuit held that Title IV D does not create enforceable rights on behalf of any family court reason that the primary purpose of Title IV D was to recoup the state's welfare expenditures on behalf of needy families by collecting <coughs> needy families by collecting child support for absent parents okay so the way I see it how are they going to prove that um, that the uh, the mother of your children was forced to go on welfare because of you how are they going to be able to prove that? They can't. Okay? And the mere fact that she gets to stay on welfare after they start stealing your money, which is even more comedy. You know, it's just disgusting. But anyway, um, so what they do is they notify you by mail that you got to, you know, show up for a court hearing or if you receive an income withholding order, let's say you didn't know about it and they claim that you're in default and you get something in the mail claiming that you owe money, well, you have to respond uh, within 30 days. Now, see what they do here? I love when they do this. They, they, they do, it, do it backwards. They just make it more complicated than it has to be, but it's under 31 U.S.C. Section 3716. Okay, so let's go there. Now, what I always like to do, I always go to the, the Cornell Law School, and uh, it's always good to click on this tab here, and we see this is under welfare, so we go down to public welfare, 45 CFR. Okay, and I found some interesting things, <coughs> excuse me, with this stuff. Now, they left out part 32 which part 32 should be there too, but we'll leave that alone for now. Okay, so let me get back to this page. Okay, so as soon as you receive it in the mail that you owe money, the first thing you need to do, I said it yesterday in my video, you know, my brief video, is like you have to respond a certain way. Okay, so this is the way you're supposed to respond. You're going to ask, uh, by the way, they're calling you a debtor. Now, what I do is I want to know, you know, where's the proof of the debt? How can you call me a debtor unless you show proof? Well, it's based on presumptions. Everything is a presumption. Excuse me. So, see how the secretary, everything goes through the secretary. Secretary of Health and Human Services. So, what I did, I created some affidavits. Now, see the way it's written here? Opportunity to inspect the records and, and all this stuff here. Well, this is not the only place that says this. Okay, now we go to... Uh, okay, same thing. 
Part 32, Administrative Wage Garnishment. This is 45 uh, CFR Part 32. Okay. Now look here. Under the authority, 31 U.S.C. 3720, uh, 5 U.S.C. 552. That's where you find the U.S. codes, right? Now the, uh, the executive order is not in there because, but this is because it's an administrative wage garnishment. Um, they're not talking about that here, but that's the, that's what they use. That's their, 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 the best tool that they have is these income withholding orders. Uh, they say two out of every three dollars they collect comes from income withholding because it's a theft. Okay, there's no other reason for you to pay them. <clears throat> I mean, they'll, they'll suspend your license, but you know, if you go to court for that, all you got to do is, you know, where's, where's the proof of the debt? There, there's no way of proving it. That's the reason why we're having such a hard time having these people respond to, uh, you know, people are sending, sending my paperwork to the uh, child support people, and they keep, the lawyers keep playing games. Well, uh, the, uh, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act says, remember, meanwhile, the Fair Debt Collection, uh, I always have a hard time saying Practices Act, is is a uh, is a law protecting certain collection practices, meaning they have to follow the law. They can't use these deceptive practice uh, collection practices. But it's still a debt, and a debt. If you require a debt to be uh, substantiated, you're allowed to do that. All right, that's what this is doing here. All right, here too as well. You know, under uh, 45 CFR, we have methods to do that. Okay, so here's the uh, uh, what we got here. Hold on a second. Definitions, right? We'll go to definitions. Now, the income withholding order has to come from the uh, the office of the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Does anybody uh, who has their income withholding order see anything from the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services? No. Okay, all right, a debt or a claim means an amount of money or funds or property that has been determined by the secretary to be owed to the United States by an individual, meaning you or me, including a debt administered by a third party as an agent uh, of the federal government. Okay, now, but what we can do what you're supposed to do when you receive this uh, uh, notice in the mail, you got 30 days to respond. I remember I told you yesterday, they, the, the attorney never does this because they probably don't know. And if they do know, they're not going to do it because their job is to expedite. Lawyers are expediters. They are not there to protect you. They work for the courts. Okay. You got the attorney representing the, the mother of your children or child. And, and your lawyer, they're both working for the same team. And then you got the um, the administrator, the presiding officer. So you got uh, three people, against, four people against you. Okay, so here we go. Notice. Notice required at least 30 days before initiation of garnishment proceedings. The secretary, right? Secretary shall by mail. Does anybody recall receiving an income withholding notice from the Secretary of Health and Human Services? Okay. We got a problem. Okay, so remember before, the debt is right to inspect and copy the records related to the debt. Let's go over here. An opportunity on the 37 of administrative offset. An opportunity to inspect and copy the records related to the debt. To enter into a written uh, repayment agreement undertaken. Come on, Rick. Fuck. Sorry, guys. This, this is very sloppy. Let me fix this. All right? An opportunity to make a written agreement. So it's basically mirroring uh, 31 U.S.C. 3716. Okay? So we're on the right track. Okay? That's what I'm showing you. So now... Now you have a right to a hearing. So now when you receive this in the mail, uh, that you got to go to court because of the child support debt, 
Well, what they're really doing is it, it, these hearings are really for uh, income withholding orders. That's all it's for. That's why it's a kangaroo court. All right? So now here's the – let me show you something now. Uh, where is it? Okay. Now, in the hearing, you have a hearing official shall notify the debtor of the deadline of submission of additional evidence. Uh, burden of proof. The secretary has the initial burden of proving the existence or amount of the debt. The secretary. The secretary has a lot of responsibilities. Okay? So, now you receive something in the mail. I already have it pre-made. <clears throat> this is what I got. Pretty good stuff. And then, what you're supposed to do when you respond, you're supposed to demand for a hearing at the same time. The burden of proof, the secretary has the burden of proving the existence or the amount of debt because the, the secretary, uh, you, you're called a claimed debtor, all right? So this is how you're supposed to respond when you receive something in mail. So before going to the court, you're supposed to send this out because <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, the child support hearings in the court is nothing but a sham. This is the proper way to respond. All right, so uh, if anybody's interested in uh, getting this uh, information, you know how to reach out to me for a donation of under $200, okay? About. It's definitely less than 200 I can tell you that. <laughs> Much less. All right, so listen, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll talk to you later.